Greetings everyone, and Great here with another H Mars 2 Definitive Edition replay. Spawn on the bottom right, or just right side as the red Ethiopians we have seen. Oh. Spawn as the left side as the Lithuanians. We have Silly Alibaba Ik Ivik. Alibaba Ivak. I have no idea how to properly pronounce that. Let's cover each player's civilization bonuses. I'm not familiar with the Ethiopians. Archer civilization. Archers fire 80% faster. Receives additional gold when advancing each, each age. And gold and food. That's actually pretty nice. And pikemen upgrades free. They can't get halberdier. It doesn't appear they get halberdier upgrade for free. Unique unit, the Shotel Warrior. I can't remember what that one does. Unique text, Shotel Warriors and Camels receive minus three damage from mounted units, making them more effective as a counter as a anti cavalry unit. Portion engines increases blast damage of siege workshop units. Oh, that's actually pretty good. And they can get siege engineers. Left side, Lithuanians, cavalry and monk civilization. Each talent center provides plus 100 food. So that sounds like per every time you get a uh, uh, built one. Got a line of walls right there as well. Scouting for some back. Spearmen and scrumptures move 10% faster, make spearmen a bit more effective countering any sort of scout rush. We do now got a militia rush. Each garrison relic is plus one attack to knights and lightus. Lightus is their unique unit. They are a unique cavalry unit, which I believe they do armor piercing damage, if that makes any sort of sense. And of course, Queen Hazar, uh, another upgrade for the Hazar line. Unique tax uh, hill forts counts to a plus three range, making them actually a bit more reasonable to defend themselves when garrison. Powered shield, spearman line, and skirmisher get plus two pierce armor. That really helps skirmishers be a counter unit and also makes the spearmen a bit more resilient to late game skirmishers and trash wars. Monasteries work 20% faster. He did get the good kills on the spearman and on the scout there. Now, now we've got these main arms here. It does have wall up there. The villagers are just trying to consume this nearby wood and does get inside the town center there and is in there as well. Getting some great followers here in the main arms. One down to one health. Didn't finish off those additional volleys of arrows, which may be fine. Depend who your uh, big find is for. Is that good for blue? Is that good for red? Uh, so life's able to perhaps maybe take that wounded one and start whacking away against some housing. Needs to return to us at one health one. The villager can even shank him. Now is it now two of them? One health? <laughs> Needs to return some of that other one there. It does shank that one as well. Now both of those militia are down. Do not have the skirmish fancy board. Speedy little guy. With his two attack damage versus the two pierce armor villagers. Trying to get, get some good damage from the archers. He is doing some good work there. Villager even up to 24. The villager even posts threats to mana arms at this moment in time. Does finish off the mana arms there. And these archers just need to fall back. They're not really going to do well versus these skirmishers. Just fall back. Get them in the town center. It will be a safe spot for them. And town center will get an arrow firing. And it's a little bit wound as well. I'd say throw that villager into that archer in the town center. It's not going to do much versus the two skirmishers. An element that's the high ground. The villager, she's trying to shank them. Be careful about marrying her. I think her murderous rage is a bit showing. <laughs> and it looks like she's going to be trying to help wall off this region. More skirmish not being pushed forward. Ethiopian is an archer civilization, so going for these skirmishers makes sense. The archers have increased attack speed. I still believe that Archer should just be inside the town center. It will get its primary arrow firing as well some health regen. And that way, if any time the skirmishers advance ever so slightly forward, they can at least get a shot there. Single scout now advance forward. Skirmishers trying to deal with him. He's fast, hard to hit, and won't take much damage. He's taking one damage per spear since it has two, two inherent it. pierce armor. And now gains some great damage around these skirmishers. I need to get a bit of a drink. Good, you don't. My drink's already open, so you don't have to worry about hearing that sound. I do now got a wave of archers and skirmishers advancing on forward and advancing on back. 
Let's see now. Blue has looks like going for more skirmishers and more villagers. He has, of course, one spearman to poke any additional scouts. We've got more skirmishers now being deployed on out over here. I wonder, does this archer fire 18 percent faster? Yeah, it would say foot archers and affects the skirmishers, and not so that description there likely will not affect uh, skirmishers. As I think the term foot archers refers to all ranged ground units that don't use melee as a primary damage source. I could be mistaken about that, however. After all, I've been wrong so many times. We've now got seven skirmishers here versus four. So red has a spear number of skirmishers as well as archers. So red can start pushing forward. The skirmishers can clear out, clear the way for the archers, and the archers will just try to push forward to get some arrows on those villagers. There are some skirmishers out in the field as or spearmen, which won't really accomplish all too much. Even if they tried to get in the minimum range of those skirmishers, the archers could annihilate them. We do not have fletching now being researched for red. Blue already has fletching as well, so both players have fletching, and red's now going for pierced armor. Very, very nice. Blue already has pierced armor as well, so very, very nice. Red's force is now going to be surrounded a little bit, and now these archers are going to uh, push them forward, but this reinforcing sculptures may dissuade them. Some of those skirmishers are not being picked on off. Red's archers have the same bit of a beating. Red scout push away forward, or at least a fresh one. And up north, there's a not so fresh red scout slicing up some villagers. You got these skirmishers now engaging. The villager up there is likely going down. Too busy micro down here. Those lose a villager there. Another one's getting hit. Spearman trying to stab that scout. Does go down there. Red's down to two archers now. This villager may go down as well. Blue skir uh, archers may focus on by some red skirmishers. Red skirmishers are engaging blue skirmishers. And overall, red was on the low ground there. It does take another villager there. So right now, the villager count is in favor of red by three now. That scout does get shanked. And now we do have these forces starting to engage each other. Red's force is quite wounded. That was pick off the archers there and doing a great job of micro. So overall, red is punching above his weight at the moment. Does have now the high ground advantage. That goes down there. That one goes down. That was roll a miss there. Rolls a miss there. Red Scout now pushing away forward. May want to start slicing up those archers, but the skirmishers are doing a good job of that. Red's not going for just a single villager. If I look over here, Red has a good reserve of food. He's about to get a uh, resource castle. Blue is not going for castle. And Blue has a superior force on the field. Seeing this minimal force here, it may give him an idea that his opponent is going for castle age at the moment. Archers now iron for counterattack. Castle Age now in the build queue, so Red needs to start eyeing. He sees all these skirmishers. He needs to build some more skirmishers rather than archers. He's going for uh, some skirmishers now. Very, very nice. Has these archers here, but of course, they can't do much versus these uh, big wave skirmishers. He does have a palisade wall there, so the skirmishers will take a very long time to pitch out away against that archer range. Does get that guy out of there, not sorting them up, and now Blue's already made some forward. And does take out that archer on the high ground. He, red is on the high ground there, gains with extra bonus damage. Skirmishers and archers right now have the same range, 5 range, but once red gets a castle wage, he's able to get some increased range benefits. Blue is not building anything at the moment, got enough, uh... Oh, wait. Blue does not have enough gold. He's far from enough gold. He cannot go for castle wage right now. His economy is... Not being part of the micro. In fact, there's some idle villagers here. Now that makes it so Red will have a massive castle wage uh, duration uh, advantage. Because Blue is still not collecting gold. Blue is just not collecting enough gold. Now collecting gold there. He's going to be severely out for a very long time. Red could either capitalize on military strength or economic. Red's going to have the ball in his court. Very, very soon. 
And red is Ethiopians. Let's see. Let's take another look at Ethiopians. Shotel Warriors. Are Shotel Warriors a uh, fast moving infantry? I can't remember what exact is their benefits. They do, of course, have access to camels, and they're going to be useful versus Lytus. But that's. Not, let's see. He can't get heavy camels later. He can't get bloodlines, though, so his can't. His uh, stuff will not be as strong as one would like, but he may be eyeing for Archer. Yeah, got Crossbowmen, no Botic and Arrow being researched. Going for some Single Knights. Some Single Knights will be excellent for this force. But no Bloodlines will hurt. Well, technically hurt less, because they'll be more dead. We do know how the Knight Fancying Forward with only 100 health. Means he will sustain 20 less hits. Suppose the archer can do two damage rather than just one damage at the moment. Got crossbowmen here. Loose force is being cleaned on up. That knight's doing some excellent work. This handful of knights are going to be very, very good at dealing with these skirmishers. Got some spearmen here. The crossbowmen, of course, can take them out. And knights generally do win 1v1 versus spearmen. Though I can't remember if that's with or without bloodlines. Because most civilizations have access to bloodlines. You're now cast away for blue. Oh, he must have... Got that bridge quicker than I would imagine. I thought he was still pretty hard, far away on blue, on a uh, gold, and not sure what double I means, but I oh, I think that maybe just miscast GG or something. I don't know. Either way, this and great saying, thank you for watching, and on to the next replay.